the finite language uh, there are see what is the finite representation is the simplest or the smallest machine it is also called as a machine okay so let us say given a language I will try to construct some finite uh, representation which is called a finite automata and then using this finite automata if I give a string to this finite automata this finite automata will say yes i accept this string no i reject this string which means the string is in the present in the language or the string is not present in the language before discussing about what a finite automata is and what are the types of finite automata i would like to take a small example and maybe we shall discuss the definitions later fine so let us say i am drawing some finite representation for a language l1 is a language which is set of all strings which starts with a then it is small a because a is going to start with a a a a b a a a so on right so i'm going to construct a diagram which i'm going to call it as finite automata and then we shall discuss about the definition later don't worry about it i'll discuss it how did i design it and what are all these we shall go step by step here i just wanted to make a point so l1 even if you write it like this in finite set or if you use this finite representation both are same now if this is the finite representation of this language i can give any string to this finite representation and now this finite representation which is also called as a finite automata in fact dfa which i'll discuss later will say yes or no let us name so i'm going to call all these circles as states all these circles as states s t a t s states and in this case we have states a b c and whenever this circle is having a double circle like this i call it as a final state and whenever a circle is having an arrow to the left of it which is not coming from anywhere if i use this arrow which is not coming from anywhere i just mean to represent that it is initial state so initial state is a final state is b now if i give me a string if i if i take a string for example a a b let us say the string is a a b now my question is this whether this string is present in this language or not so don't just say that since it is going to start with a obviously it is present yes i know but then i want to give this th problem to a machine and i want to solve it therefore i cannot ask it to think intuitively or use its own logic so using this machine this finite representation any machine should be able to answer this question so how we are going to do it is initially i am going to write this string like this initially i'll be starting from initial state a a is the initial state and upon looking at small a small a a is going to state b and upon looking at this string or the symbol small a b is staying in the same state upon looking at small b b is staying in the same state now see this upon scanning the entire string entire string <coughs> we started from the initial state and we are able to end up at final state so a string is said to be in the language or a string is said to be accepted by the finite automata if upon scanning the entire string we reach from initial state to final state 
so this string is said to be accepted now maybe you can take the string b b a let's take the string b b a is this string in the language no right why because it is not going to start with b so what should happen this finite automata should say that this string is not in the language so i'm going to start in state a and on seeing small b i'll be going to state c and i'll be in state c and upon seeing small b i'll remain in same state see this i'm going to be in capital c and upon seeing small b i'm going to remain in the same state therefore it is going to be c and c on seeing small a c on seeing small a is going to remain in the same state okay so you have to observe one point here upon looking at the entire string or upon scanning the entire string we started from initial state and the last state c is actually not final final here the state b is final here the state c is not final therefore this string is not accepted by the finite automata which is a means by which it is saying that this string is not in the language so this string uh, a a b is in the language and this string b b a is definitely not in the language so i have given you something about uh, a finite automata now what is a finite automata what are the various kinds of finite automata what are the definitions we shall look at them one by one maybe i'll take the simplest example this one and then i'll try to define everything i'm going to erase this maybe you can make a note of it okay so the first thing is finite automata actually automata is for plural and uh, automaton is for singular but then i am going to use automata for everything so the correct word is to use automaton but then i am used to using automata so let's go with it that, that doesn't make a lot of difference when you're solving gate questions okay so finite automata are basically of two types one is finite automata with output and the other is finite automata without output and again finite automata with output is of two types one is mure machine other is mille machine finite automata without output is of three types one is dfa other is nfa and the other is epsilon nfa okay so let's look at all these types so we are going to look at all these finite automatas in detail the first one i would like to start with is dfa so dfa is nothing but deterministic finite automata dfa is deterministic finite automata nfa is non deterministic finite automata epsilon nfa is non deterministic finite automata with epsilon mos so we are going to discuss each one of them but then i would like to start off with dfa so first thing is dfa deterministic finite automata what is the deterministic finite automata it's finite automata which contains q sigma delta q not and f 
So generally any finite automata is represented by this quintuple. It is not just DFA, even you can represent DFA, NFA, epsilon NFA, all these right using this quintuple. I'll take an example and maybe I'll make it clear. Let us assume that this is some finite automata accepting some infinite language, some language. A, A comma B, B, A comma B. This is A, B, C. Let us say B is the final state. Whenever I am writing this diagram, this is also a transition diagram. Whenever I am writing this diagram, I will use the arrow, this arrow to represent the initial state and I will use double circuits to represent the final state and uh, and <clears throat> the all, all the other states are simply uh, some other states. Now in this Q equal to set of all states. What are the states here? One is A, one is B, another is C and sigma equal to input small a comma small b and q naught which is also known as dot state it is going to be a see i am writing all this all this for this particular dfa fine and uh, f is set of all final states and in this case this final state is one so let's write what they are q q is finite set of states sigma sigma is input alphabet q naught q naught is start state f f is set of final states f is a set of final states if you look at f i'm saying that it is a set which means there can be a dfa with more than one final state and that those final states are obviously one of the or a few of the states from all the set of states possible so the relation between all the set all the states and the final state is this Q is super set of F. So this is how we can define the uh, define all the elements of DFA except this delta. Till now Q sigma Q naught F this is common for DFA or NFA or epsilon NFA only thing that varies or only thing that changes from uh, finite automata to finite automata is delta. So let us say we have to define the delta. Delta is a transition function from Q cross sigma to Q. So what is Q? Set of all states. What is sigma? Input. So in this particular case Q cross sigma is nothing but A, B, C cross A comma B. Therefore it is going to be Q cross sigma is going to be capital A small a, capital A small b, capital B small a, capital B small b, capital C small a, capital C small b. Fine. This is Q cross sigma and now the Q is a comma b. There are only two elements. Now what do I mean by a function from Q cross sigma to Q is, see this, capital A on seeing small a, where is it leading? Capital A on seeing small a, it is going to capital B, therefore I have to write this. And capital A on small b, where is it going? Capital A on small b, it is going to C. Oh, one more state has to be added. Capital A on small b is going to C. And capital B on small a is going to B. Capital B on small a is going to B. Capital B on small b is going to B. Capital C on small a is going to C. 
and state C on small b is going to C. So this is the transition function. So this is the definition of DFA. In DFA, for every state, for every state, for every input, <coughs> input there will be exactly one transition. And this transition is exactly one, which means it is at least one and at most one. It is definitely one. So why is it called deterministic finite automata or DFA is if you see any state on seeing an input it is going to only one other state. If you consider NFA on seeing an input A it might even go to some other state. But in DFA on seeing a small A it is always going to go to one state. On seeing small V it is always going to go to one state. So we don't have multiple uh, edges with the same labels from the same state. So that is why it is called deterministic machine and in computer science deterministic machines are very important because deterministic machines can be uh, modeled or even deterministic machines can be directly implemented as a software in uh, computers and the best example is uh, in compiler design okay so <clears throat> we shall take some example and construct a dfa you could pass it and take a note of it <coughs> Now the question is construct a DFA that accepts set of all strings over A comma B of length 2 so construct a dfa that accepts set of all strings over <coughs> a comma b of length 2 it means that uh, the input alphabet sigma equal to a comma b first thing is identify the input alphabet okay and the second thing is you have to even identify the language what is the language we are actually interested in the language is set of all strings over a comma b of length 2 so what are all the strings of length 2 one is AA, other is AB, BA and BB. This is the basic steps or it is the uh, starting part. Once you identify that uh, this is the language, take the smallest possible string. The smallest possible string is AA and construct the skeleton. Skeleton is nothing but on seeing small A, I'll go to some state and on seeing one more small A, I'll accept it remember before drawing any DFA you have to draw the skeleton for the smallest string and then we can build the muzzle over it okay so how to now the thing is is this D is this a DFA this is actually not a DFA because if I see states capital A capital B capital C capital A we have given transition on what happens with small a but then in capital A what happens if you see small b we didn't do any transition for small b so it is not a complete DFA therefore you just give one more transition on b okay you just think about it what happens if I see cap small b on capital A which is nothing but if I see small b initially on capital A then I need to accept it right and here also I am going to accept it. If you don't understand this, don't worry. We are going to do a lot of questions. This diagram is exactly going to accept all the strings present in this language. Okay. Uh, so is this a complete DFA? Again, is this a DFA? This A is complete because on A, we have given transition on small a and small b, which means a if it looks at a or b it is going to go to b and on b you have given transitions on small a and small b which means capital b on looking at a or b it is going to go to small capital c but what about capital c for capital c we didn't give any transition now think about it how did we reach capital c and what happens if i see one more symbol in capital c see how did we reach capital c we reach capital C by seeing either AA or AB or BA or BB. 
वी हैव रीच कैपिटल सी बाय सी ए ए और ए बी और बी ए और बी बी लेट्स टेक एनी एग्जांपल लेट अस से ए ए इफ यू आर इन कैपिटल ए ऑन सीइंग स्मॉल ए यू विल बी रीचिंग कैपिटल बी एंड इफ यू आर इन कैपिटल बी ऑन सीइंग स्मॉल ए यू विल बी रीचिंग कैपिटल सी इज इंड इट देयरफॉर ऑन सीइंग ए ए वी आर गोइंग टू रीच सी नाउ नाउ इफ यू आर इन सी if you get one more a what does it mean if you are in c and if you get one more state one more symbol a it means that we have seen a string of length 3 is that string in this language definitely no therefore if i see either a or even b this string length is going to exceed 2 therefore i'll be going to some other state d think about it how did i reach c just by looking at any string of length 2 i am able to reach c but then after the length of after the string of length 2 if i see small a or small b it is actually going to be a string of length 3 therefore i am going to go to some other state what if uh, is this a complete dfa this one is complete because on a or b we you said what to do and this one is complete because on a or b you said what to do this one is complete because on a or b you said what to do but then this one is not complete because you didn't decide about what happens on a or a or b see this now let us say you are in d so what does d indicate d indicate set of all strings of length 3 if i get one more a or b this is definitely set of all strings of length 4 uh, and more so anything after this i should not accept it and i am going to be in this state so how is this d acting is once you reach d it is never going to go back to final state that is why i even call this state as a dead state or trap state so you need not worry about the terminology about what is the dead state or trap state basically we have only two kinds of states one is final other is non final in this case c is the final state or accepting state and a b and d are non accepting states in you know there is a special state it is not any anything special i am calling d as a dead state because once we reach d there is no way we can again come back and uh, reach c okay so if you look at this c is accepting set of all strings of length 2 and if i get any string which is of length 3 or more than 3 i am going to reject it at d maybe we can take any example and you can trace it out let us say this string is a a i am going to start at a a and on looking at small a i am going to go to state b and on looking at small a in state b i'll be moving to c so we have moved from initial state to final state upon scanning the entire string therefore i say that this string a a is in the language you can check it for all these strings but if you give anything greater than this let us say this string is a b b initially i'll be in state a on looking at small a i'll be moving to state capital b and on looking at small b from capital b i'll be moving to capital c and on looking at one more b i'll be moving to d and upon looking at any number of strings of uh, let us say a will be in d only right therefore this is rejected this is accepted this is rejected so now this is the time for us to define what is a string and how is it accepted by finite automata the definition goes like this a string is said to be accepted by a finite automata if we are able to reach the final state starting from initial state upon scanning the entire string then the string is said to be accepted by the finite automata again see this a string is said to be accepted by a finite automata if upon scanning the entire string if i can reach from initial state to final state then i can say that a string is said to be accepted if on scanning the entire string if i am not able to reach the final state 
if i end up in any of the other states if i end up in d or if i end up in d or b or a then i say that string is said to be rejected so this is the accepting state for this language and these are the rejecting states or non accepting accepting states for this uh, language so there are two definitions one is acceptance of a string other is acceptance of a language so maybe i'll write it down it is worth uh, noting down So string acceptance, I say that a string is accepted by a finite automata if upon scanning the entire string, if I start from initial state and if I end up in the final state, then I say that the string is accepted by the finite automata, okay. So it is like this, scan the entire string. if we reach a final state from initial state this is important a final state which means there can be more than one final state at least if you are able to reach one final state that is enough okay so if you are able to reach the final state from initial state upon scanning the entire string then we say that the string is accepted now the next one is when do you say that the language is accepted so a language is said to be accepted if we accept all the strings in the language So language acceptance is a finite automata, it, it can be any finite automata, a finite automata is said to accept a language if uh, all the strings in the language are accepted by the finite automata as well as the strings which are not there in the language should be rejected by the finite automata. Okay? So a finite automata, it can be NFA, DFA or epsilon NFA, anything, a finite automata is said to accept a language if all the strings in the language are accepted this is important and all the strings not in the language or rejected this is important okay so you cannot say that a language is said to be accepted by a finite automata if it accepts all the strings in the language the reason is i can give you a simple automata which accepts everything okay so just look at this a finite automata should not just accept the language or less should not accept all the strings in the language you should also reject the strings which are not in the language maybe i'll just give you an example to clear this point you please note it down i'm going to erase it So see this point I can draw a small simple automata like this and I can write it like this 
this is the smallest automata give anything it will accept give anything for example i can give you can give uh, small a it will start from capital a and on seeing small a it is going to capital a from initial state we are able to reach the final state okay before going to this maybe you, you should get one doubt um what is this diagram you are having the uh, single state and the same state is going to be initial as well as final do we allow such kind of uh, automatas yes it is perfectly legal we can have the same state as initial state as well as final state or even the initial state can be final state okay so if you look at this diagram i'm starting from initial state and on seeing small a i'm going to reach the final state therefore a is accepted and you give a a i'll start from a i'll go to a and again a initial state to final state yes accepted give all the strings in this language this finite automata is going to accept all the strings but then you should not say that the smallest this one this finite automata let us say call it as finite automata 2 this one doesn't accept this language because according to the definition of acceptance of a language a finite automata acts is said to accept a language if it accepts all the strings in the language as well as it should reject all the strings which are not present in the language but if you look at this we are accepting all the strings in the language as well as all the strings which are not in the language therefore the finite automata this one is the exact automata or the required automata for our language and not this second one got it okay so let's just extend this question a bit 